crops are plants grown to protect and enrich the soil. They're planted during seasons when you are not cultivating food crops in your garden. In Western Washington, we plant in late fall and let plants grow through early spring. Cover crops are planted to avoid the problems associated with leaving bare soil. There are many benefits to you and the environment when you use cover crops, whether you have a small or large garden. Even a cultivated garden is a natural system. When we leave bare soil in the garden, there are fewer natural processes going on to keep our garden soils healthy. After you harvest your food crops, you may be tempted to leave that area bare until it's time to plant next year. But leaving an empty bag can make your garden and the environment around you less healthy and productive. A cover crop can reduce many of the problems associated with bare soil. As many gardeners know, bare soil is where weeds spring up first. Cover crops literally cover your soil leaving less space for weeds to grow. Another problem with bare soil is that heavy winter rains can cause both soil erosion and compaction. Once again, covering your soil with plants is the solution. Cover crops intercept rainwater, slowing it down and allowing it to slowly absorb into your soil, rather than washing soil and nutrients away. This also means that the pressure from rain isn't going to compact or harden your soil. Cover crop roots also break up soil compaction. Not only does this help in the spring when you want to plant seeds into nutrient rich, well aerated soil, but it also keeps sediment and extra nutrients out of our waterways. Well aerated soil is also important for the soil microbes and beneficial insect communities that help keep our gardens healthy and growing strong. Not only do these microbes increase nutrient availability for our plants by helping to break down organic matter, but many pollinators and other beneficial insects start their lives in the soil. Later, when your cover crops grow larger and insects reach their adult form, Cover crops provide above ground habitat and food for pollinators and other beneficial insects. At the end of the cover crop season, we incorporate the cover crop plants into the soil. This addition of green plants adds organic matter and nutrients at the very start of the gardening season. Over the course of the growing season, soil decomposers break down the organic matter and free up essential nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which are then available to your garden veggies. Cover crops act like a slow-release vitamin for your garden, as nutrients become available over time. Like all plants, cover crops take in carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. This means that in the winter, cover crops continue to store carbon some of which stays stored in the soil instead of being released into the atmosphere. Cover crops are an important tool in reducing carbon in the atmosphere and the effects of climate change. This is especially important on large-scale farms, but many small gardeners all using cover crops can make a difference too. So say you want to start using cover crops in your garden. There are a couple kinds of plants we use as winter cover crops in Western Washington. These are plants that can be planted in the fall, start growing quickly, and survive a winter freeze. Some types of common cover crops are nitrogen-fixing legumes, such as vetch, crimson clover, and winter pea. These are great if you're trying to boost nitrogen levels in your soil. Grasses such as rye, wheat, and oats grow quickly and are able to obtain lots of soil nutrients, such as nitrogen, making it available for future crops. These grasses are great if you want to maximize organic matter and bring nutrients up to the surface of your soil. Broadleaf species such as brassica, tillage radishes, and turnips can have other benefits such as breaking up compacted soil, and some are also edible. 
When selecting your cover crop, you want to focus on what your goals are and what will grow well in your climate during the season you're hoping to plant. If your soil is lacking nitrogen, then a legume species might work well. If you want to add maximum organic matter or outcompete aggressive weeds, a grass might be your choice. If you have compaction issues, then try a broadleaf species. And don't be afraid to mix up your cover crops. Just make sure you do your research about the species you want to plant to ensure they will work well in your area for the right time of year. Planting cover crops is simple. Around mid to late September and before mid-October, in any part of your garden where you won't be growing fall or overwintered veggies, clear out any weeds and scatter your cover crop seeds evenly across the bare soil. Rake them in to cover lightly with soil and water as you would when starting other types of seeds. If you want to use a cover crop but you still have food crops in your garden, that's okay too. Just interplant cover crop seeds with your vegetables. The most crucial thing to give your cover crops a good start is the timing of planting. You want to make sure they have reliable water, so plant either in an irrigated area or once fall rains have begun. Cover crops need enough time to establish a root system before the first frost comes so they can survive the winter. Mid-September is usually the sweet spot in our region, though this can differ year to year with weather conditions. Just make sure to get them planted by the end of October to reduce risk of frost killing off the seedlings. Over the winter, you don't need to do much for your cover crops. Most of their root growth will have happened in the fall and they will be doing their job covering your soil and excluding weeds all winter long. In early spring, as the weather warms up, you will notice your cover crops start to grow again. The prime time to terminate your cover crops is after they've flowered but before they've gone to seed. This is the peak of their nutrient levels. You can terminate your cover crops as early as you need to start your garden, but you don't want to wait so long that they go to seed and become a weed. You can cut the cover crop down at ground level, leaving the roots and that nitrogen in the soil. Leave the greens on top of the bed and cover with dirt or chop them up and incorporate into the soil. The plant material needs to decompose over a few weeks before planting, so you can always move the greens to decompose in a compost pile if you need to plant immediately. Smaller pieces of cover crop will decompose faster, so chopping speeds up the process. If you are a community gardener in King County, then KCD can provide you with free cover crop seeds. Just visit kingcd.org slash cover crop to learn more about the community agriculture program and sign up. If you have questions about using cover crop in your garden, just get in touch with KCD staff. Let's grow something great together.